Hi, I'm Rob Cousin. Welcome to my shop. If you're planning to cut dovetails, you have to have a rock solid vise to hold that work in place. I'm going to show you a Moxon vise idea that may just fit the bill. Stay with us. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help you take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and don't forget to turn on the notification on your mobile device so you'll know every time we release a new video. Good? All right, back to the bench. So this idea actually came from a fellow named Jason Langle from Indiana, and I contacted him and asked him, I said, how'd you come up with the idea? And he said, well, I was trying to cut dovetails and I was, had a rickety old bench that just would shake and rock when you tried to saw on it. And he looked around his shop and he said, okay, what's the most stable piece of equipment I have in here? And he says, my table saw. And he got looking at the end of the table saw and he said, wow, I could put a moxin vise right on there. Great idea. Now, thanks to uh, retired Colonel Luther Sheely, he had another idea with some springs and we add a little something to it. This is the prototype. We're gonna go through and make one out of hardwood, but I just wanna give you some idea of what it looks like. We used relatively inexpensive Moxon hardware from Woodcraft. Uh, with this, we did the prototype just out of pine, but even out of pine, you put that in place and you can adjust the tension on both. And now you have a rock solid grip and you can go in there and make your cuts. Nothing moves or vibrates. Now, I know from teaching students that they end up cutting into the bench. So we took a piece of MDF, put some magnets in it so it would stay in place, set that on there just so that if you're setting your plane to prop up your tail pin board, tailboard or just to prevent you from accidentally touching down there instead of hitting your solid steel bench, you're running into a piece of MDF. So we're going to go through and we're going to make this out of some heavy birch walk you through the whole process, and I think this may be one of the cleverest um, vice contraptions I've ever seen for someone who is short on time and equipment, and you can take the end of your table saw that's not otherwise not being used and make it a really good vice, at least until you get yourself a good bench. Oh. My availability is 30 inches, so my jaws, I'm gonna have two of them, are gonna be 30 inches long, and when I did this, I wanted to make sure that the top of this wheel stayed below the top of my saw, but I also wanted it close enough to the center that it wasn't bending just on the bottom and not on the top. However, there's a pretty big flange right here that will help you with that. So we figured five inches in depth was going to be the ideal amount, so those will be five inches wide. This one inside doesn't need to be as thick, but the thicker this one in the st is, the stiffer it's going to be. So. Uh, eight quarter or two inch material is relatively easy to find so I'm going to keep this one an inch and three quarters and we're going to get two of these we'll do the same one for both the inside as well so, so here's what we have to do obviously we have to cut a hole through both pieces that allows that threaded rod but we also have to mount this now my table saw has three or four holes already uh, going through the side that I just utilized to hold that in place. But I want to show you something else that we've done. I'm trying to keep this really simple so that it can be done with minimal tools and done quickly enough that you can actually be using it within an hour or so. Now, Luther came up with this good idea. By putting a couple of springs in here, you're not having to pull this back. So as soon as you end you really are never gonna use more than two inches in here, or typically not. In fact, you're usually gonna be in the three quarter or less. Rather than having to go in and mortise those nuts into that piece, what I simply did was cut a hole big enough to allow for the, the uh, spring and also to cover, capture that nut so it would allow this to go in tight. We need these holes to be a little bit bigger than the rods because you want that to be able to move a little bit and you don't have to force it when you're trying to close it. This rod needs to be locked solidly in place so that this will be nice and firm. So this is so, what the end of my table looks like. The corners are actually quite, quite sharp, but it's designed to have another attachment on there. If you don't have holes, you can easily drill a hole through cast iron. It's really soft metal. Regular twist drill bit will, will do it. 
but I can, I'm going to utilize, I've got four, I'm going, I only need three of them. So we'll get to that part, but I just wanted to show you the end of this bench. Here's what you get with the Moxon kit from Woodcraft. Two hand wheels, two threaded rods. It's quite a coarse thread, and these, the outside diameter is three quarters of an inch. Four nuts and four washers. We're probably only going to use these two, but the option's there. Now, we added the springs, and I suppose you could get those at most hardware stores. And those were the three bolts that we got in order to mount that first piece directly to the end of the saw. And we got them so they have a countersunk head. You want to sit that nice and flush. Particularly since you're going to be clamping up against this, you don't want to be leaving marks in your piece because the head is sticking out a little bit too far. Okay, so let's put these together. Actually, we'll, we'll clamp them together before we drill them, but we'll just use this as a layout. I'm just going to look and see which is the cleaner looking. So I think I'll put this one up against the saw, and this will be the one that you see from the outside. So we'll keep those. Actually, I want to cut, I want to cut a 45 just to finish it off a little bit. So if we do that, that's going to... Uh, determine that we have to come in a little bit. So we'll just mark a 45 degree angle. We'll leave a little bit. So that's where that's gonna go. So we wanna keep our flange on a flat surface. We don't want that sitting out and uh, somewhere in that bevel somewhere so I suppose if we put it right about there actually we better put that washer on because that's going to be what we lean against actually the same diameter so it's okay so I'm gonna say right about there Jake just made a point that's worth considering he said do you really want the edge of the wheel to be sticking out over the chamfer and looks yeah a little bit but it also means that when you're walking around your bench, you're going to be hitting that. So I'm actually going to move that in. I'm going to make it so that the edge of this is right there on the, on the uh, chamfer. So that's going to be uh, our first major change. Let's bring that in four and an eighth instead of what we had it at. It's our second hole. We'll put an X through that one. So there's what I'm talking about when I mentioned the center spur. That's the part that's going to make contact with the wood first when you drill so that it doesn't wobble or move all around on you. So I'm going to use an eighth inch drill bit and it's a nice sharp brad point because we don't want it to wander. It's going through some pretty heavy material. And as long as I get through that first piece, at least mark the second one and then we're good to go. Then I can come in and even with an eighth inch hole, that will center enough that it'll actually allow me to drill and keep it on. And that's my three quarter that I'm going to use to go all the way through this piece on the bottom and this piece part of this piece. So I'm going to use a drill press. Now if you don't have a drill press, you can do, do this by hand. You just have to make sure that you're drilling perpendicular. So what I used to do is I would watch one uh, axis and I'd have somebody else sitting over there and guide it. And it'll work out. But a drill press makes things a lot easier. First thing I want to find out is how much room I have to allow for the spring when it's fully compressed. So I'm just going to put that in the vise, squeeze it down all the way, and then measure that. It looks to be about a, uh, five eighths of an inch. So if we have that sitting on top of the nut, so that's going to sit on there like so. I don't want to have to go in and countersink for the nut. I don't want to have to mortise out for that nut. That's going to sit up on the surface. So if I take the nut and add 5 eighths to that, that leaves me an inch and a quarter. So I'm going to go about an inch and 5 sixteenths in depth. On the underside of this jaw, 
with the larger diameter bit. This is an inch and a quarter. That will allow for this to cover the nut. So we need to go down, what do I say, an inch and a quarter? Five sixteenths. Inch and five sixteenths. So we need to go right to here, drilling from the inside. So. Now the three quarter bit. And I can go down through this side. Okay, now those holes are a little too tight, so I didn't want to go up a, a full sixteenth. So what I'm going to do, and you can use a round file for this as well, but I'm going to use what's called a rasp, and it's essentially a file for wood. And I'm going to go in, I'm just going to open that hole up just a little bit. Good. Okay, now I just want to make sure this is going to work. So when that's in place on the outside of this, because that goes all the way in, that will allow these two pieces to come up nice and tight. So next thing I can do is go in, make sure I get my top right. This is the proper one. We're going to go in and we're going to cut a 45 and I'm going to leave about that much of a flat spot. So then we'll run our 45 down here, cut across this. And the reason we want to do that is so that when we're sawing, when we're in there with our saw, it allows us to get a little bit closer to the piece instead of being that far away. We're going to work in here. It's nice to get up nice and tight. Allow your saw and your fingers as well. I've got that blade at 45 degrees, and I'm just eyeballing to see where that's going to Okay, now our next move is to get this in position. So we'll get a clamp. Okay, now I've cut a pencil, really small, and I've got to get in there. Three will do it. It's not critical, but we want it to be as close as possible. So I'd like to, I'd, I'm gonna find bolts that fit that hole the exact size. And then we're gonna have, we're gonna match this with the exact same size drill. So we can, should go in there and find those centers. Hey, if you like this video, we have more. Our monthly newsletter has subscriber only content discounts monthly on tools, and anything we bring out that's new, subscribers get first crack at it. Click on the link below. Let's get back to work. Now I'm gonna do the best job I can at guessing where the center of that is. I'll just draw a line down. It looks to be off just a little bit. want to drill these all the way through.
Okay, you gotta remember, this is the side that we marked. This is going in toward the table saw, so the countersink is going to go on the opposite. And we can use the same setup with the fence. Now, if you don't have a big countersink bit like that, or you don't have bolts like that, you can use a regular bolt. And what you would do is before you drill this hole, you would just drill a larger diameter hole that will allow the head to sit down below the surface. marks off the top I want to clean the face up and I'll do the end grain as well Okay, I'm going to plane the ends of these. This is a little bit difficult just because of the angle, but it's stiff enough that I think it'll do it. Okay, all the surfaces are planed, nice and smooth, knocked off all the corners. Don't want to be reaching around a sharp edge. We left that one sharp because that's going to go directly against the edge of the table saw. But all of these have been knocked off. Actually, that one didn't get done. I'll do those. But now we've got to put this in place and we want to have a two inch capacity. So what we need, I'm going to put the, I've got the washer on. I'm going to thread on the hand wheel. I'm going to bring it so that the uh, threaded rod is flush. Push that in. Now the inside of the nut is going to sit against that surface. So we want two inches from here to there. Right about there. So that's, we're going to want to sink this that far in. Obviously the same on both sides. So take this apart. Don't drop that on your toe. Now that hole is pretty tight. I may have to thread it in if I can't pound it with a mallet. Oh, that'll go. That's good. Okay. Wonderful. Put a washer on that back side. All right, that's all set, but we've got to go ahead and Bolt this in first. Okay, that's gonna be nice and snug. Now I put these on. Okay, that closes nice and tight. And the nice thing about it with those springs, when you want to open it up, it'll come back. You're not having to pull it back. And then you can adjust it accordingly as you're tightening up your board. So I've got a piece of three, uh, pardon me, half inch MDF, 30 inches by 12. 
That'll sit there just like that. And I'm gonna put three magnets in, one in the middle and one on either end, about halfway. And that'll just keep it from moving around when you're using it. But it also means I can come down and I can use the magnets to hold it against the back side of the table saw and then I don't lose it. And I'm not constantly having to make a new one. There really isn't enough material to screw these in, even though there's a hole there. So I use this uh, super glue, and it seems to work. Put that in place and let it sit for oh, just a couple of minutes. That should be dry enough. And I'm not gonna bother putting any kind of a finish on this because it'll get chewed up in time and have to be replaced. But that'll stay put. And when I'm done with it, hopefully it'll sit. Yeah, it'll rest on the hose, won't fall over. So let's try it out. Pull that right up like that. Works like a charm. There you go, Mox and Vice, the end of your table saw till you get your good bench. Awesome, awesome idea. Good luck. If you like my work and enjoy my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos and help take your woodworking to the next level. I've always said, better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the link below, the chisel and plane icon, it'll take you to our site and introduce you to all the tools that we actually manufacture right here in our shop. It'll also give you information on our online and in-person workshops.